Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. This is my favorite time of the week. In this video, it is called Inner Light, the Parable of the Ten Bridesmaids. And it's going to be a wonderful subject. And I'm going to do something I have never done on this channel. As some of you may know, I'm a spiritual philosopher. I have studied many spiritual beliefs. And this time we're going to do something very, very different. But before we begin, I would like to say thank you all. Thank you all for your wonderful prayers from last week's message dealing with Allison, her grandmother Elizabeth, and her daughter Sarah. It is truly amazing when you look at every aspect of prayer and how strong it is. And Tammy is recovering actually she sent me a text she stills not able to talk over the phone and that's okay and her son is on the road of a recovery but her father passed away and I asked everyone to pray for Tammy because she's going through so much right now but she has oil in her candle and her light is still shining. And so is Elizabeth. And so is beautiful Allison. So before we begin this update, I would like to give everyone the good news about Allison. As you know, what took place last week with her they believe she had spinal laryngitis and she's recovering. It was not what they think, but we will get to a text from Elizabeth. But isn't she beautiful? From everything that she went through, this is one amazing child, isn't she? Truly amazing child to have so much faith and be strong. This is the text that Elizabeth sent me yesterday. And Allison, beautiful, wonderful Allison, she gets to go home. And what they thought was she may have had Leningitis. But the antibiotics worked so fast and hard. And this is so wonderful. When I received this message, me and Jill were so overwhelmed. But there was E. e. coli bacteria in her system. And it was also found in her brain. So to have this much going on with a wonderful child that's been struggling, it's truly amazing that the prayers worked. Because the Lord said, Ask and you shall receive. And we did. And I want to thank you all 
for the wonderful prayers, she did receive high dosage of antibiotics, and it saved her. And, you know, when you look at this the way I do and all of you do, you know, the doctors says that she's stable now to a certain point, and we must continue to pray for her. We must, as well as Elizabeth and her daughter, Sarah, that fell away. So maybe, maybe this happened for a reason. We, we don't know, but everything happens for a reason. But we don't know the outcome of what this would be like. And then Elizabeth sent me this beautiful picture of Allison leaving the hospital, and I wanted to share it with you. And if you look at this beautiful smile, it truly brought joy and happiness to me and Jill, Elizabeth, yes. But I wanted to share this with you today before we begin this message. And she's still in need of prayer, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm asking you, and I want to say thank you. And Elizabeth says thank you all for your wonderful prayers for this beautiful child of God. And it's really amazing. My son had spinal meningitis when he was about five years old. And they didn't think he was going to make it. And the church came together. All of my friends came together and we prayed. And his spinal fluid was already milky white. And the doctor t told me that there was no way for him to recover. Now I was shocked. His mother was shocked. So we prayed. And I came in the next day. And there was three doctors standing with the main doctor. And they saw me walking and they turned away. And I said, my God, something's wrong. And he said, Mr. Wright, I have something to tell you that's impossible. What did you do? What did you and your wife do last night? And I said, I done what you asked. I called the church and we came together and they prayed. I was not there. I went home and his mother stayed with him overnight. And he said it's, it went into reversal. 80% of his spinal fluid was correct. 20% was on its way to recovery. So I was shocked. But he told me, he said, Mr. Wright, this is totally impossible. We have all the main doctors looking at this and we can't, we can't explain it. And I said, I believe I can. Because the Heavenly Father listens to prayers. And sometimes it may not be the answer that you're looking for. You know, we want our loved ones to continue to be with us. But sometimes, like Tammy's father, you know, it was his time to go. And Tammy said, he's in God's hands. And I truly believe that. Because none of us are perfect, are we? No. I know I'm not. And I believe you're not either. And that's okay. But I want to thank you all. And I want to make a statement here. This is the first time I'm going to apply a teacher, a fantastic teacher. His name is Theodore. Nottingham and he's known as Ted Nottingham and he is truly an amazing speaker when I first came into his teachings I was I was overwhelmed that so much that I related to with his teachings and because the way I see it he, he presents himself from a neutral standpoint. 
What I mean by that, he is not biased to any certain spiritual belief. And, you know, someone like that, that doesn't show favoritism, should I say, to one belief over another, that tells me that that person is very open and is on the road to truth. On the road to understanding the spiritual realm, but also to, to give us a different perspective on everything. Every aspect that deals with the spiritual life and us connecting to it. And this video, I, I'm going to let him speak. And he's the one that's going to give the parable of the ten bridesmaids. And as you know, we are in the time that the Lord is coming back for his bride the church and I'm not speaking of a material building because Yeshua said the temple of the Heavenly Father is within yourself and I tried religion I believe most of you have and it just didn't work for me I, I saw so many problems and the problems just kept you know continuing and, you know, I saw that they was very biased. What I mean by that, it was their way or the highway. And I just simply don't believe that. And that's why I try my best to research with an open mind to understand what we're going through so I can prepare myself spiritually. And this is not the time to go on a spiritual diet. Okay? It's not. With everything that is happening, this is a time to be strong and put the forearmor of the Heavenly Father on. So we can prepare and we can prepare spiritually for these events that are taking place. It may be related to the governments around the world, as you know. Um, a lot of issues are taking place. They are making radical changes. They're trying to take away our human rights as a human. We have rights as a human. And we have the right to say no to a, what's that word, a vaccine. Okay, we have the right for that. And they're trying to take that away. And I believe this is the beginning of days. You know, a lot of people say this is the end of days. And it, it, it very well could be in that perspective. But I believe that this is the beginning of days. We're going to see changes. Okay, it could be related to earthquakes. Earthquakes are off the charts right now. It could be related to the magnetic reversal process, which... Monday, there will be a new video out, maybe Tuesday, I'm working on it because I have to recalculate, I found something that is very serious and I want to get it down as close as possible to where I believe we're at, and that video will be out Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to work on it today, and I've already spent four hours recalculating, and I'm going to spend another four hours today. And we're starting to see earthquakes in diverse places now. And volcanic activity that's never been seen before along the Pacific Ocean. And then we have the rocks coming. People ask me, what about the Trojans? Well, you know, I stated that if NASA, if NASA and India, which is working together on a space alliance, then they're not going to tell the public that they saved the day. It's not going to happen. So I, I'm not getting information. I might get information, and when I do, I will update everyone as soon as possible, as soon as I get it, because the month of August is not over with yet. And even Mike around the world made a statement 
for the last three weeks that the red iron oxide rocks will be here in 2022 as far as the late part of 22 2022 and they're definitely going to be here by the first quarter of 2023 so I want to go over Ted Nottingham Theodore Nottingham and this is his channel he has approximately 14,000 subscribers but what is so interesting about him He's not biased. And what I mean by that is that he's very open-minded as a spiritual philosopher to listen to other people's teachings. And I was truly amazed with him about, should I say, four years ago. And what got me to him was his teachings on Mary Magdalene, his teachings on the lost book or the book that was taken out of the original transcripts dealing with the book of Thomas. And here's one of, from about Mary Magdalene. It's only short, 4 minutes, 50 seconds. But there's a number of videos that he goes into detail about Mary Magdalene. And he's a soft-smoking individual. But right here... This is the one that got me, okay? The lost gospel of the book of Thomas, the unknown teachings. And, uh, you know, if, if you like a second opinion, I, you know, or third or fourth, here's another one about Mary Magdalene, 22 minutes. And then questions, answers to the questions dealing with the gospel of Thomas. In a spiritual bridge, he has multiple messages that are so beautiful and outstanding. And like I stated, I've never done this before. You know, I, I know all of you, most of you enjoy my, the spiritual message that, that I do on this channel. And I want to say thank you. I really do. And we are going to listen to him. And I like to read your comments for his your opinion over his teachings. And if this is successful, I'd like to do it each week for the next four weeks, all the way through September. But it's up to all of you. If you prefer to listen to my spiritual philosophy dealing with different subjects, then that's fine. You know, put put in your comment. But if you enjoy listening to Mr. Nottingham, then I would like to do I, I would like to do this. Not as really a series because each title's different. And I think it would be so wonderful to to listen to him. Me and Jill has listened to him a number of times since she's made it. And I want to say thank you all for your prayers. She got here safely, and I am so grateful. I really am. I, you know, I'm so proud. This channel has really came together with, you know, the original family, and now we have so many new family members coming in, and I am truly grateful for each and every one of you. And I'm trying to, you know take care of things as far as answering emails and getting caught up on them there's a few that I have to go back and it's time for me to answer their emails and a lot of families are falling apart they're losing their faith but a lot of families are coming together because of the signs because of the signs and this is not the time to let your candle go out because when the light goes out, the darkness will come, won't it? Yeah. And light exposes darkness. Darkness does not expose the light. In my perspective, it may be different from yours. But I hope you enjoy this wonderful message. Please be safe, everyone. 
please continue in prayer and be strong. And may the Heavenly Father continue to watch over you and your loved ones. God bless everyone. Much love. Let me begin by drawing your attention to these candles. Consider how powerful the meaning of each one of them is. You saw our friends coming forward, each with their own story, each with their own memories and pain. So you know that each here has great meaning. We are not just looking at candles that are lit to give light. We know they carry powerful, significant meaning. There is something about light and darkness all the way through the Bible. In Psalms we read, you are a lamp unto my feet. You guide me in darkness. So we know that this light referred to in Holy Scripture is profoundly metaphorical. It is knowledge, knowledge, gnosis, that enlightens the heart and mind of the human being. And without this light, we are lost. We can't find the way. Like so many of our brothers and sisters. And so this is just a first sign of the significance of this parable. Be sure it is not a story that cannot be understood. Be sure it is one of the great powerful teachings the one called Savior because he brings a knowledge that can change our lives, that can enable us to walk through the fire of suffering, that can give us hope when there is no hope left in the world. This is mighty teaching. This is a classic example of the depths of Scripture and my how it has been misread, misrepresented, and so I invite you today to enter with me into the deep teaching, into the heart of Christ's revelation for us today, because this is urgent and this is for you today. We hear of these uh, bridesmaids. In ancient times, that was the tradition. Weddings were at night. The main person in the wedding was the bridegroom, not the bride. Probably because he paid all the bills back then. And it was the tradition that he went through the village. And as he went to the bride's house, everyone gathered slowly but surely, carrying torches until the whole village was one great procession. In a lost world when there was community and togetherness. And then that would be followed by a magnificent multi-day long banquet. And Jesus with his extraordinary genius and wisdom and poetry takes this humble everyday event and turns it into a message in a bottle for each of us today. So as we hear this, know that you are the bridesmaid. And if that's problematic for you, we can say you're the groomsman and the bridesmaid. And Jesus, revealer of truth, is the bridegroom or the groom. And so we read these simple words, they, we, went to meet the bridegroom. In that simple sentence is the expression of the human life. 
the desire to find meaning and truth in life. May it be that everyone here still hungers for that deep meaning. It's a lifelong journey. There are many around us who've given up, who've burned out, who've hit the wall, and who live in darkness for themselves, think they have it figured out, but it's sterile and dry. So I appeal to all of you for whom there is some yearning. It's in our DNA to find that deeper truth that makes us whole and that heals us. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of people interested in this, but that's okay. Because the communion of saints, those who have gone before, are there to tell us that even if it's one person at a time, that journey is the purpose of existence. Jesus tells us there were five foolish, five wise. He doesn't use that word wise like he does in other areas about the wise of the world. The sophos, the sophistry, the sophistication. He talks about those wise, like he does the, the ones who built their house on rock, who hear what I say and do it. So wisdom for the Holy One is to take these revealed teachings about cosmic truth and to implement them. The foolish ones carry the knowledge that has been made available, call themselves spiritual or Christian, but have no oil. That is so deep that you have got to understand what the code is. Oil in ancient times was used to anoint the kings and the priests to not only represent but incarnate the filling with spirit, the consecration of that human being. The great Zechariah had a magnificent vision of a golden lampstand with olive trees leaking with oil into golden bowls and the voice of the uncreated one saying, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And the one that we claim to follow, who whose teachings we listen to each week, Christos, Messiah in Hebrew, means the Anointed One. Did you know that? It really wasn't his last name. Jesus, Yeshua, the Anointed One. Now you all know that oil has an interesting property, doesn't it? If you've ever dribbled some on paper, on purpose or by accident, you know that it seeps in and soaks up and spreads out because that oil, that power of spirit fills our being. So oil is the manifestation, the application of the teachings in our lives. All of us are tempted to have little lamps, with no oil because it's easy we appreciate church and the knowledge and all of that sort of thing but to actually do it to let it penetrate our heart of hearts that's difficult Jesus calls them slash us foolish mori is the Greek word from which we get moron we are morons when we have before us the keys to making it through this life and do not use it. Do not make it our own. Do not let it seep into our lives to the marrow of our bones. Do not let it change us. We hear the bridegroom was being delayed. Now if you're attuned to this with me now, you know there's a beautiful meaning to this. 
What does it mean that the bridegroom is delayed? So I ask you to take that moment, recent or otherwise, in your life when you felt all alone. When there seemed to be no connection with help from above. When you were so crushed by your fears or unhappiness that you felt indeed abandoned and alone. Who? hasn't known that one and Jesus names it delayed the bridegroom was delayed it's the human condition and he follows it up by saying during that time the groomsmen and bridesmaids you and me got drowsy and fell asleep how often have we heard just last week again the use of that word sleep that hypnotic state in which we live that forgetfulness of God of the sacred of the holy that living like everybody else out there as though there were none self-interested barren and empty again fell asleep to the presence of God that is our great struggle that is the enemy of our joy and happiness in this world and then we hear at the midnight hour. Now you creative types, think about it. At that dark hour, at that hour of crisis, at that moment when you hear the word cancer, when unemployment or divorce or any other awful thing happens to you, that's your midnight hour. At that time of need, Suddenly they are awakened, saying, look, here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. We need God now. And what do we find? The Holy One giving us that human condition once again. Those who had no oil, those who in good times had not lived a spiritual life, found their lamps going out which means they couldn't become part of the procession which is about light and joy and so they ask the others for the sharing of their oil and if you take it naively and simply you think well gee they should lend them some isn't that the nice thing to do but no there's a teaching here don't you know that that oil cannot be passed on you cannot put faith in another human being's heart. No matter how hard you try, no matter how many books you give them, no matter how many times you invite them to church, each one of us has to awaken to this on our own, in our own way, resonate to it in that deeply personal manner. That oil, that truth, that faith cannot be transferred to another. All we can do is tell them to come and see. Come find some. You could use a little of this. But they have to do it on their own. For each person. And so they tell them to go buy some from those who sell oil. In other words, go quickly learn how to apply this learn all the complications and twists of what it means to live the teachings and do it very quickly because the midnight hour is here this is the time when we need God's presence and you know that's a rough one you can't just begin in the middle of the crisis it needs to be happening in the quiet times we need to be at this all the time for it to be ready for us to be ready to connect with spirit especially when we need it and then we're told while they went to buy it while they went to get that knowledge that would turn the light into oil and make it their own the Holy One came and went off with those who were ready those who were ready 
We are those who are seeking to be ready. Not for some strange afterlife. This is not about end of the world or second coming or anything like that. This is about immediate encounter with the living God. It is truth, cosmic and universal, presented in the simplest form. That special gift of Jesus of Nazareth and we read that those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and what is the wedding banquet you can be sure because we are talking spiritual teaching that it's not about gorging oneself it's not about running after the chocolate cake wedding banquet means eating together and if you still eat together Families eating together, isn't that a glorious thing? Isn't that a communion, a relationship, a becoming closer to each other? The wedding banquet is a picture of interaction with God, of lived experience in your heart of hearts with the goodness of God interacting with you, sharing with spirit and then we have these mighty words you know sometimes you gotta tell it like it is and Yeshua the anointed one told it uh, like it is because it cost him the crucifixion so he didn't mince any words and these are the words and the door was shut that ought to concern somebody we have limited time limited time in our life to make that oil out of the friction of life to make that connection with God in the good times and the bad times not just on Sunday when the choir is singing because there is a time when it's too late just think of those who aren't here today may have good reason but they're missing something don't you think the words of the Savior trying to get through to you now so that this afternoon and tomorrow next week when trouble comes along you have a key to applying the teachings but it's always our choice we can't make anybody do anything the door shut shocking the unconditional love of God is revealed as the nature of reality and yet the door is shut because there is consequence and justice somewhere in this universe and so we find the bridesmaids and groomsmen and good Christians and believers and spiritual people running up late I guess none of you were late today even with a change of time good for you we had a few early folks but they made the best of it running up late and knocking at the door Lord Lord let us in we're ready now and these unbelievable words I do not know you what do we make of that that ought to send a shiver off up somebody's back. Friend, it is not that God does not know you, not the God revealed by Jesus. It is that we do not know God and have wasted our life not knowing God and have failed to implement the teachings, to work together, to walk the path until it is too late. You know, in my line of work, I've been with people for whom it was too late. You don't want to go that way. That's why it's urgent. That's why it's for right now. Today is your chance. We shut the door on ourselves. We cause God not to know us because we don't know God. We're given all the opportunities. We're given this opportunity. We're given life itself to know the mystery and wonder of God. Let's get to work. 
Let's know what's important. Let's see the big picture so that in our time we can be known and we can know as we are known. And so the Savior ends with these words of hope. This is not a threat or condemnation. This is just truth. Keep awake, therefore. Keep awake in every moment. Be vigilant. Don't let yourself sink into that hypnotic state of self-absorption where there is no God. Make the best of it. Know that everything matters. Know that every opportunity is the moment, the heat of the battle, in which you will make that choice for the door not to shut. And all of life contributes to that opportunity. Keep vigilant. Stay tuned to the reality of God. That you may enter that banquet and live a life that is full of abundance regardless of the bank account the abundance of joy of knowing that you belong to the one who is and that you can be God's instrument of compassion and goodness in this world word of the Lord for today friends would you pray with me Lord Jesus help us to hear these mighty teachings to make them real and personal and close to our hearts that we might indeed be part of that universal banquet of joy in the knowledge of your presence. We pray this in the powerful name of the one who reveals this to us, Jesus our Lord. Amen.